Welcome everyone to this school update where we wanted to really present our kind of Bradfield end of year report to celebrate many of those things that have taken place this year um, and give you a flavour of some of those things to come in future. Like we've learnt many things through lockdown, the video presentations have been really warmly received by parents and carers and so rather than a long um, letter and so on, uh, we thought we'd try and communicate like this. So in this update, I want myself and Deborah Banks, Deputy Head Teacher, to give you an update, uh, to give some thanks to you and to the children, to talk about some of the teaching and learning developments, our pastoral developments, the work we've been doing for special educational needs and or disabilities and, and development of that team, something about uh, behaviour, attitudes and safeguarding, and then some of the capital projects that we hope to um, fulfil in the next few weeks and months. So what a year uh, 2021 has been. Uh, we thought 1920 was challenging enough, but obviously this year that's continued. I'm really so pleased and so proud of all of the students and all of the staff for the way that they've risen to each and every one of those new challenges. The new learning that we've all had to do and the resilience we've all had to show to be able to get through this year has been absolutely fantastic and really does need celebrating by us all. So we go back and we remember that in September 20 we returned under the new guidance. We had a term of getting used to that in the bubbles and the other types of arrangements we had in place. Then we had a second lockdown and then we moved to that remote virtual learning teams and again, the resilience you showed as parents and carers and the support for your children was phenomenal. There were some positives, you know, parents and carers talking to us about lots of things, getting really much more involved in that learning because one, it was there at the side of you at that point, you were having conversations. And again, many of those have continued and that's great. We do need to pick up and remember those things that were, that were the real positives that did come out of some of those times. We then return again in March uh, with the testing regime and again I have to thank you. Some of you have been hit so many times uh, by your children being close contacts perhaps of other children who've tested positive for COVID and that has been really challenging for all of us and again your support has been phenomenal and I can only thank you over and over for that. Our year 11s were absolutely great uh, coming back and preparing with us portfolios of evidence uh, so that we could grade them and we hope that each and every one of them will be proud of their achievements when they re receive those results in August this year. At the same time though as all of that's been going on we've managed to make some real improvements in our SEND provision and with that um, team and again they will be picked up uh, by Mrs Banks shortly uh, in the next slides. Likewise in teaching and learning Mrs Banks can talk through, we've introduced visible learning program this year, building on the work of John Hattie, that's really starting to have impact and puts us in a really strong position for when we return in September. So as Mr May alluded to, an awful lot of work has been happening behind the scenes uh, this year to get us ready so that we are looking forward to September to start to put all of this into wider practice. Staff have been um, involved in a visible learning program. We've done the foundation training for that. Um, and the real drive of that is about making sure that we are explicitly sharing with our students exactly what it is that we want them to learn in a lesson, which may sound like something um, very simple, but actually it's not about what we want the children to be doing in the lesson. It's actually having that crystal sharp focus on what we want them to learn, whether that's new knowledge, whether that's applying a, a particular skill. Um, and from September onwards, and some staff have been trialling this in the last few weeks, our um, intention is that every single lesson we will share explicitly with your children the learning intentions of the lesson and also, very crucially, what the success criteria are in each lesson. And the idea behind that is to build up those assessment capable learners who are able to look at what they've done during the lesson, look at the success criteria 
and judge for themselves the progress that they have made. And so we'd urge you from September onwards that when you're asking your children what have they done today at school, to just switch that conversation slightly. What, what, what have they learned? What progress have they made? How do they know that because of the success criteria that they've been introduced to? Alongside that, and to very much complement it and keep it live, the heads of year have done a lot of work considering what are the rewards that we need to build in. We're still going to call them positive points and thrive cards, but you can see on the screen there the key things that we're seeking to recognise and praise in lessons, but also out of lessons. So we want to be focusing on the appropriate communication skills of our young people, their resilience, learning it isn't always an easy thing, and we want to build that culture where the students are expecting learning to at times be challenging and to relish that challenge and hence that focus on having resilience and then lastly that concept of doing your personal best we of course always um, encourage our students to try hard but actually we want to move that further that concept of doing your personal best means of course that you know what your prior best was so it links to that idea of success criteria and being able to develop our students to be able to measure their own progress and have that sense of success Alongside that, you can see at the bottom of the screen, we have made some um, quite subtle, but we think very important changes to the curriculum. At Key Stage 3, we are introducing a discrete reading lesson once a week for Year 7 and Year 8 students. That doesn't mean that we're following any particular reading programme, but we want to build in an opportunity for our young people to be able to really read for pleasure. So there will be good quality, high quality, challenging texts that the teachers will read to the students and then will use those texts as a springboard for discussion. So we're really excited about that development, both in terms of widening the students reading, trying to ensure that reading becomes a habit, that it's something that's done for pleasure, but also taking that opportunity to build the children's oracy skills. Um, alongside that, what we've done is taken out of the students' timetable as a weekly lesson, their IT lessons. Feedback from parents and carers, the children themselves and our colleagues at primary schools is that a lot of the curriculum that was there for our IT lessons in year seven and year eight was actually too often a repeat of what they could already do and they'd gone through with their, with their primary teachers. So whilst we will have drop down days that make sure we really focus on those key things like being able to send an email, an attachment, that, that real crucial awareness of online safety, those will be done as, as drop down lessons. And similarly at Key Stage 4, for our year 10s uh, moving forward, and then this will be the case for all subsequent years, RE and personal development will be in there as timetabled lessons. And indeed that will be the case for Key Stage 3 in terms of personal development, and we'll talk more about that shortly. From a pastoral point of view, there's the continuation of our planning to make the form tutor the pivotal person in the student's journey through Bradfield, and that we want the form tutors to be that first port of call for yourselves at home when there are those low level issues that might seem quite small, but actually to the child themselves can be quite big. And that the form tutor is that key kind of linchpin between home and school, able to support our students, it's able to support you as families, and also at times give that level of challenge. Um, we are moving this year, therefore, that our heads of year will not necessarily move through with their year groups, as we've already communicated to you in an email earlier in the year. And the idea, the key idea behind that, actually, is that we are making the heads of year responsible for the tutor time programme for that particular year group, so that they become experts in that tutor time programme to ensure that it meets the needs of our young people at that particular stage of their journey through Bradfield so that we have a discrete tutor time program for year seven that looks different in year eight that looks different in year nine and so on and we're doing that to very much link in with the personal development program that I alluded to a moment ago that will be there as a weekly lesson to make those real key links 
between how our students are developing academically and how they're developing as individual human beings, getting ready to be the good citizens that we want them to be out in the wider world. We've been so pleased this year to receive such a lot of positive feedback from parents and carers um, in terms of our developments with our SEND team and the impact that Joanne Hogg as our SENCO who's been in place now for just over a year has managed to make in such a short space of time. Really strengthening and sharpening the focus on the delivery and the support for our SEND students. We are very happy to have secured some significant new people in terms of continuing the development of that provision from September onwards. We've further strengthened our teaching assistance team and we have also employed a nurture teacher who will be working with some of our most vulnerable students. And she is somebody who has got both a primary background and a secondary background, which is quite unique. And she's therefore absolutely best placed to be able to work with with those students to deliver a wide part of their curriculum and make sure that we are meeting their needs as well as ensuring that they have got that access to our ambitious curriculum at a secondary level. We've also employed an assistant SENCO because with that increase in the focus on our SEND needs of students, we have actually um, increased the number of students that are on that register looking at those um, hitherto unmet special educational needs and that's required us to take on an assistant SENCO. Um, we continue with the in interventions next year that have begun this year before school, um, taking some of our students out of some of our lessons, linking to that form time program that will continue and increase next academic year. And we very much see the delivery of our um, SEMD needers coming from that quality first teaching. So our visible learning programme that I talked about earlier, again, that's our key way that we are ensuring that we are meeting the needs of those students first and foremost in the classroom, because the greatest impact for our young people on that SEMD register will always come from that mix of the support that is made in advance and that, that wraparound focus um, around the lessons but also very much making sure that those students are in the best place to access the lessons also. We're also really excited that locality funding is in place now to um, deliver additional provision and we'll be talking to the local authority over the summer about having an IR at Bradfield School, an integrated resource, meaning that we can cater um, even, even better for a wider range of our SEND students. So following on from our appointments in SEND, uh, we've also made some additional appointments of behaviour managers to support Corridor and other key duties. Key message there is that we will we'll, we'll learn from what we've done uh, during COVID about that level of supervision, both before school and during school and then at the end of school. And that will continue with even more key staff able to pick up some of those duties. We'll have additional lunchtime supervision likewise um, and we will continue with our CPD linked to relationships and building resilience so that we can all work together uh, collaboratively to make things better at the school for, for everyone. Uh, we continue as I said about the zones. We will send further details particularly for those new students about the zone arrangements but they will be as they as they have been this year where students when they arrive will go to specific year group zones where they'll be supervised from eight o'clock. Likewise, we'll continue the form room zones by year group. That's really worked well, given the year leaders that opportunity to go and see their young people each and every day. We will continue with the lunchtime detentions that some, a very small number, require that kind of uh, point uh, in the day at which we can just readdress some of those behaviours um, in a very very easy and light touch way compared to going further into further after school detentions for instance or exclusions. Likewise we'll continue with homework support um, and flagging up there that we will spend a considerable amount of time when we return talking to our young people about phones. We've had to allow or felt that that was the right thing to do when we did have to put people into very specific areas. Now that we can widen those opportunities, uh, potentially have 
some sports and things like that at lunch times, we will be going back to no phones within the school day. We'll sell that message ourselves to our young people, so don't worry about that unless you feel that that's something you need to do at this stage. But we'll make that clarity with them, as we did previously, uh, that phones will not be allowed during the school day anywhere. And we'll give them lots of other things that they can do to keep them busy during that time. Then lastly, some of the capital projects that we just want to share. Uh, we have, as we've moved into Tapton School Academy Trust, been able to use some of the capital funding throughout the trust to pick up on some of the areas that were picked up through due diligence when the trust were first looking uh, at the school and the school were looking at the trust. And so they include some uh, continuation of upgrades. All of our computers have been upgraded. We upgraded all of the projectors last year. We'll now this summer be looking to install a new server, new switches and Wi-Fi support as we move towards that uh, compliance, cyber security compliance, so that we can make sure that the school is as secure as it possibly can be. Um, show My Homework, we've had, if anything, the requests for Show My Homework from parents um, and also from staff have been overwhelming. We knew we had to move to Teams. Um, we've tried Bromcom Homework. We will be moving back. I'm sure that will be much relief to many people to show my homework uh, from September. Um, classroom displays, they're the projectors and so on. We continue to upgrade those. Laptops obviously have served a real purpose this year. Many of them still being at home, but there is a refurbishment program and new laptops are being bought, not just for the SEND students, we've already got those, but for all students within the school. What we are doing though is focusing on building that provision, making sure it's as secure and as reliable as it can be. We're not looking to get into any new distractions at the moment. As Mrs. Banks has pointed out, that visible learning program is everything that we're driving towards and everything needs to work um, in that direction. Another curriculum development is in food technology. We are looking to have an additional food tech room um, that will be probably during the next academic year. And then in safeguarding terms, CCTV will be going in shortly, stage one being internal. So we will have full CCTV coverage of all corridors, stairways within the building. That's not the case at the moment. Um, and that centralized areas where we can monitor that, pick up on things and be able to deal with things much quicker uh, and, and substantially much more robustly than we can now in terms of our CCTV coverage. Car park access, it's been um, really, really well uh, managed actually to have uh, parents dropping off on what we now have as that um, parking zone area outside of school that will continue. We will have a radio barrier at some point, which will mean that we can control who is entering the car park uh, allow passes for those people who need to enter the car park as they as they do now, um, but give us that coverage in the day so we are aware who is coming on and off site at all times. A bus line, not a very, the most exciting thing, but it is to me. We will have a line which will demonstrate to our students how far back from the buses they need to stand so they don't get hit by the wing mirror. Um, some struggle with that at the moment and we hope that that will make the place much much safer. So in total um, the bus line not being very much of this budget but the IT budget and all of those things we are talking um, actually over £300,000 so it is a lot of investment being made in the school to make it a safer and better place for all of us and it is important to share I think some of those with you. So lastly, we do want to wish you a great summer. Today, as we're about to finish in school, we are going to say goodbyes to some real significant colleagues um, who've been here for some time, all of who deserve a mention. But I will just mention one, and that's uh, the retirement of Mrs. C, Jill Seed, who many of you will know and who has been at the school for a long time as head of RE and picking up various other roles during that period of time. We wish her all the very best and we'll be doing so in front of the staff shortly. I'd also like to say thank you to those of you who have submitted uh, supporting statements for our hope to uh, get some recognition for Keith Holmes. I do want to point out at this point 
Keith is not retiring, so there's no panic there. Keith will be here with us next year. Um, but you will have seen through Mrs. Banks that we have asked for supporting statements. They have been the most incredible things that we've read this year. The, the level, you know, we know we make a difference every day, but to see that, the detail of what he has managed to do for the students, both that he's taught in his lessons, the ones he's supported through extracurricular activities has been overwhelming. If you do have more of those, please do send those and direct those to Deborah Banks in school, and she will use those as part of that application. But that, that has been the most humbling thing, and we are really, really grateful that you've managed to take the time and, and recognize all of the things that he's done. Again, I just say he is here next year, so don't panic. Um, so have a great summer. Uh, we look forward to seeing all students return at 8 o'clock on Monday the 6th of September. We will, as I said, share further details about what they do and what that will look like shortly. But for now, have a great summer. Thank you for all of your support and we will see you all soon.